When it comes to antibiotics, the message from doctors has been loud and clear for a long time. Do not take antibiotics unless you have to. But now, the CDC is getting ready to recommend taking them directly after sex to help prevent STIs. The proposed guidelines only apply to gay and bisexual men and trans women. What's the rationale here? Alex Miller has the details. This is doxycycline. It's a common antibiotic used to treat a variety of bacterial infections. And now the CDC is getting ready to recommend it as a morning after pill for certain people to prevent sexually transmitted infections. While anyone who has sex can get an STI, some groups are disproportionately affected, including young people, gay, bisexual, and other men who have sex with men, pregnant people, and racial ethnic minorities. The CDC released a new proposed guideline on this topic earlier this week. It advises gay and bisexual men and transgender women take doxycycline soon after potential STI exposure during sex. That's instead of saving the pills for treating diseases after they've been diagnosed. The proposal was made in light of recent research, which found some people who took doxycycline within three days of unprotected sex were much less likely to contract chlamydia, syphilis, or gonorrhea. The studies were conducted among gay and bisexual men and transgender women. So it's unclear if this approach is just as effective for other groups like heterosexual men or women. Still, health officials say they're encouraged by the idea. Dr. Jonathan Merman of the CDC told the Associated Press with STI rates on the rise, quote, more tools are desperately needed. Alex Miller, Scripps News, New York. So that's the reasoning behind the proposal. Is it a good idea? Dr. Uh, Connie Kellum is with us tonight, professor of global health, medicine, epidemiology at the University of Washington. Dr. Kellum, we understood that the sample was, you know, gay, bisexual, um, trans women. But, it, I mean, everyone kind of shares very similar bodies and makeup. Why not say it for everybody? Well, thank you for that question. The reason is that they're, we're really trying to view this as a, a targeted intervention where we would be trying to reach uh, those who have the highest risk of future STIs. And we w there are trade-offs, obviously, with using an antibiotic for prevention. And there's the most benefit would be derived from people who have a higher chance of getting an STI in the future, and that would be um, gay and bisexual men, either those who are living with HIV or on HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis. I see. Okay. And I mean, I'm gay, and I don't want you to worry about uh, offending me. And I guess I'm asking this because I think people want to know it, why you say, um, you know, at a higher risk. Is it that, you know, these groups are more sexually active? Is it also the, the mode of sex uh, that is not, you know, maybe the same as straight people? Yeah, I think it's, it's a little bit of both. Uh, in the study that we did in San Francisco and Seattle, there was a pretty high rate of um, partners and condomless sex. So it's probably who you're having sex with, whether or not you're using condoms and the frequency of, of sex. Okay. Um, I know these are so sensitive, um, you know, but uh, again, I, I hope we can speak as frankly with as we can. Um, and, and I know you've uh, done a lot more in your profession, so I appreciate that. So uh, we have all been warned for decades. And I've been the one, I will admit, going into the doctor saying, I need a Z-Pack. And she's saying, no, you don't. And I'm saying, yes, I do. I really do. And how about one for the road? Um, <laughs> you know, we've been told don't take antibiotics if you don't have to. Are you concerned about maybe creating a superbug? Yeah, I think that's the most common question that we get asked. Um, we looked at this in our study, and it's also been studied in three other studies, and we did not see any um, major worries in terms of uh, selecting out re resistant organisms. But I think these studies lasted for about nine months. And so now that we have three studies that show efficacy among men who have sex with men, we really need to understand whether or not there is a risk of resistance with longer term use. And that will only learn by actually doing implementation and following people over time. Mm -hmm. and by the way, what is the long-term concern about people having STDs, STIs? I mean, because you don't see, you know, people dying really of syphilis anymore that I that I know of. Like, if somebody has chlamydia or something, why would that be 
I mean, I know it's not uh, probably fun, but why is that such a big health deal? Yeah, well, there's, for men who have sex with men and uh, trans women, it's less of a, it's not as much because it's associated with uh, very bad health outcomes, although syphilis definitely can cause um, blindness and deafness and uh, neurologic disease, but that's relatively uncommon. But we're in the middle of a period where for the last six years, we're continuing to see ongoing increases and really epidemic rates of gonorrhea, chlamydia, and syphilis. So a lot of okay. this has to do with trying to reduce the number of new infections and reduce secondary transmission. Okay. For women, obviously, it, it's different because they can suffer the consequences of infertility and, and reproductive right. health co consequences. Absolutely. Um, so if the CDC proposal were to go through, how would that actually work? Is it I go to Walmart the day after I have a, a night with somebody and I just buy the pill? No, it would have to be administered by someone who can prescribe doxycycline because first you would want to do STI testing to make sure that they don't currently, uh, someone doesn't currently have STIs. If they do, then they would need to be treated and then uh, oh. it would be uh, a behavior they would engage in in the future after being tested for STIs and also after going through counseling to make sure is this something that they think they would benefit from, that they can adhere to, and that the benefits outweigh the, at this point, pretty uncertain risks of uh, antimicrobial resistance. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Um, so, you off-label use is not uncommon in medicine. Um, would this maybe be the same if somebody, just out of an abundance of caution, I'm imagining I, I'm a woman and I you know, might want to do this. I, I just have to think this would be a somewhat porous system because anyone can say, I'm gay, doctor. You know, we don't carry ID cards, meaning anyone's going to be able to get the pills, right? Yeah, but I guess in my experience as a clinician and having lived through the last decade of the implementation of HIV pre-exposure prophylaxis, I think most people actually make pretty uh, informed decisions. Most people don't want to take medications for something that they don't perceive themselves to be at risk of. And there is, mm. as you've uh, pointed out, there's been a lot of discussion about we shouldn't use antibiotics um, unnecessarily. So my hope is that in that context, we will get the message out to people who, that this is really for someone who's had a recent STI, gonorrhea, chlamydia, or syphilis, um, and that the data really at this point only have been shown to, that it is effective in men who have sex with men and transgender women. So I think there will okay. be additional studies to try to look at whether women benefit, but until we have those data, we'll try to message it specifically for those who are at high risk of STIs understand the population uh, parameters there. What about other illnesses? I, any um, research being done right now to see if we can ward off other illnesses prophylactically? You know, it's been used for malaria prophylaxis. Doxycycline is one of the options for um, malaria prophylaxis. It has a disadvantage of being daily, and it has been used to uh, prophylax against Lyme disease. but. Doxycycline has really? um, a relatively narrow spectrum of activity, so I don't think it's likely that we'll see this being applied to a large number of other um, infectious diseases. One of the mm -hmm. advantages of doxycycline is that it really is highly effective against uh, chlamydia and syphilis, has generally moderate efficacy against gonorrhea, so it's it's got the right um, spectrum of action for STI prevention. Well, as you say, doctor, this is hitting levels in certain communities that are really of concern, and to have a tool in the toolbox could be very helpful. Dr. Connie Kellum, University of Washington, thank you.